Welcome back, one and all. We're getting ready for our second game of our second best of two between Cloud9 Academy, who took a dominating first victory over Golden Gardens Academy. And looking at this next game here, Crumbs, what do you want to see changed? What do you want to see adapted to by Golden Gardens to possibly be able to overcome this huge task of taking down Cloud9? I want to see some respect. Respect Cloud9. <laughs> They're going to be making plays. It mm. didn't feel like they thought that Cloud9 was interested in answering back. And so every time that Cloud9 actually struck, it seemed like they were completely caught off guard. They did not give them the credit that they deserved as the champions of LCS Academy, that they're very much looking for the avenues to punish their mistakes. And that happened way too many times. And so I like the aggression that Golden Guardian showed. I don't want to see that changed. But the defensiveness, the recognizing that once you make a play, the enemy is also going to be interested in making their own play. That's the area that needed some tightening up. They need to respect that Cloud9 will be answering back. And if they can do that and continue to build their leads while not giving much in return, then they'll win these games. And when we look at the replays from that game as well, you can definitely see there's a, a bit of that cockiness coming out from how Golden Gardens were able to play. Because yeah. early on, they made some fantastic plays. You know, they got the nice... Uh, two kills early on over Sven. They were able to try to see if they can utilize that. But here, you just see where Brismal and Newbie just were way too overextended way too often after that. They all happen in the bot lane. With the Nautilus and Rumble coming down, they just ulti on top of each other, and there was nothing they could do. The Thresh could not save them. And then it was here, the really where it looked like, oh, wait a minute, was this the fight that Jinx steals with the rocket? Yes, oh, this yeah, is yeah. actually the Jinx steal with the rocket. So this, it, I think they got confident from this fight, which really could have not been their their last fight. They probably should have lost that one, but getting that dragon steal helped them gain the confidence that they really wanted. And by this point, it was already too late. Watch Prismal there, right? He gets ulted, has to go all the way back, flashes away, He's not autoing anybody. Cloud9 has nope. already won the fight. He might as well have been dead. Yeah, he got feared for so long that it was as though he, like you said, as though he was dead. He had no damage he was doing in this entire fight. So Rose Thorn, who was a bit too overextended, didn't have Niles back him up just yet. And after that, it was cleanup crew from Cloud9. They were able to completely rout Golden Guardians, get themselves the dragon, push right back into the base, and over and over again, rinse and repeat, finding these plays. Yeah, they just knew that once these carries go down, the Akali is so easy to peel for. There's no squishy targets that she can really go on. Kaisa's self-peel keeps her safe, and everyone else can just pile onto whoever comes close. It really was a one-sided affair once Cloud9 got going. And fun fact, though, you mentioned how the Nocturne fear kept going forever. It's a 2 second and 25 duration at max rank yep. and you're maxing that second it is a long time these are the kinds of stuns that you almost always get mercury treads for so a carry getting hit by that not a single member with merc treads or any cc reduction was going to be very hurtful for golden guardians hell cleanse would have been nice to be able to get away from some of that qss anything really at that point you're just trying to make sure you stay in the fight you need to make sure you're a part of it and not locked down forever because those fights happen in the blink of an eye that 2.25 seconds that happens while you're feared is enough for your entire team to die that's that's a long time in league of legends right in the team mm. fight in an explosive team fight with burst champions being involved that spell rotations happening some champions have multiple spells that can fit in 2.25 that's a few crits right that could be if you have a high attack speed that's two auto attacks right there some back crit on that one that's half hp of one of your teammates it's almost as long as you know like a morgana q where it lasts, it lasts what three seconds and you just you're waiting that entire time it feels like an eternity it's the same thing right anything over two seconds just feels so much longer in the context of league of legends and then you realize it's only two seconds it's not that long but there's so much that can happen in this game in that time window that you need to make sure you're surviving especially for what the composition was that golden gardens had which was getting a lot of damage throughout the fight sure niles could assassinate someone but even that is on kind of a timer. It's not an immediate, I will automatically kill Sven within half a second. He needs to be able to get some of those uh, spells out first. Yeah, and, and the Kais is so hard to kill. 
Like, unless you land your E on top of her, you're not going to be able to follow her successfully where she re -ults. She also has a stealth. This is why she's so picked, despite critics saying that she's not such a good champion and there's others that outshine her in the meta. Well, she has the best self-peel out of any other AD carry, the best follow-up. She's just so easy to get away and difficult to punish. So that's part of why the Akali pick was a little suspicious because it didn't quite line up with the entire identity of the team composition where everybody is trying to dive, where everybody is trying to peel. You had four parts that were peeled and one Akali, which made it awkward for her to find her way in these fights as we saw in that last replay. Yeah, so hopefully when we get, in, get into this next game, we'll see a little bit of that change coming in from Golden Gardens, making it so that the composition just fits more neatly together, where they're all on the same page, they're all trying to get the exact same memo uh, across the board, and not have Niles dive in with Rose Thorn, while you have Yunbi be running away with Prisma on the other side, or getting feared completely out of the fight, because there were some times where there was a great shockwave or two from Yunbi, but he had no damage throughout the fight, because they weren't able to get that uh, momentum and time to really be able to have what we would consider a late game for an Orianna or Jinx. They had that momentum in the early game. It was building, but then they <laughs> they reached for so many silly plays. The one bottom where they overchased the Nocturne, then the teleport behind them to try to catch the Nocturne again. Uh, these these things backfired so hard for the Golden Guardians that, at the very least, though, I think that they can be proud that they had a strategy that did start to net them gold because oftentimes you end up in a game and you, you start to wonder, well, we don't even know how to get an advantage, right? We don't even know how to get, how to get it. Now you got it. Now the question is how to hold on to it. So it's baby steps, baby steps. It's almost like when you play one of those games where as you get further into the game, things get more difficult. It's a faster speed, but then you lose, you die, you reset at the beginning of the game, and everything's super slow. And you're you're getting impatient trying to wait for this a lot. That's almost how it was for Golden Gardens. They were a little impatient. They're like, oh, we, we should already have all this stuff because we got it earlier on, not realizing they needed to slow it down a bit. It's not wait a little bit longer. Once the pace picks up, that's when you could start accelerating and feel like how you had previously. Yeah, especially when you're up against an opponent that you know is fierce. Mm -hmm. You know Cloud Nine's coming out with a vengeance. It's no way that Sven's coming down here to Academy and not gonna be putting on the show at least half the games, if not all of them. So starting on the first one, it's fully expecting some more fireworks from the cloud nine bottom and maybe the early game doesn't go as harsh as it went where they got kind of hard camp down there but the team fighting the rest of the map looked solid that it did and you know it's crazy too because there was we already talked about this and we're gonna harp on it once more is that sven had so much attention put onto him immediately by golden garden it's trying to put him down immediately and it didn't matter so you want to see maybe they're going to change things up a little bit more do they want to play around that bot lane again or maybe do they want to try to help niles out a little bit more on the top side of the map since it was niles who got a lot of that attention reciprocated by cloud nine and niles did get a lot of well he got a lot of help in the draft and that they set him up yes. for the akali they really wanted him to get that pick into the nar but I just don't think that that's enough value out of your pick. The top lane isn't going to have that much of an influence unless you're picking something that hard counters that can get an advantage there. So it may be on this red side they could do something differently. But, you know, I'm tracking the patterns that we've seen in these first two games, Magical. And I just think the Rumble is so clutch because of the pairing with the Nautilus. Already, so many games we're seeing this combination just dominate. So I think it's going to continue going down that path, and I want to see what these teams answer to it. I'm more interested to see if Cloud9 actually gives it up and if they have a response to it, because otherwise, this combo might just dominate all day long. Well, as we have pretty much gone right through the bands already, Lee Sin actually got to make it through this time around since Udyr got banned, which meant Lee Sin grabbed. But on the other side, Prismal is getting his Kaisen. I feel like maybe that's why Kaisen was grabbed by Sven so early on, is that it, it is a great pick and it is a comfort pick for Prismal over and over again. And as you see Forest banned on the other side, that's normally a pick that does excellently into that champion.
Yeah, Varus uh, also shows how valuable this pick is. If Golden Guardians was banning it against Ven, and now Cloud9 is banning it themselves. So that just shows me that this pick is crazy valuable. And finally, they denied there Nautilus. I was going to lose my mind if Nautilus was paired with Rumble Kais again. I, tell, I would not have known what game we were on at this point. Like Every game has the same draft already in the ball lane. I don't know. It looked like, was that a replay from two games ago? No, no, it's this one. <laughs> So at least we're breaking up the combination, but it seems like this is what the meta in Academy has been thus far. It was the hard meta in Collegiate, mind you. The winners, Winthrop, ended up playing five games of Nautilus, first picked in the semifinals, and then just ran it all the way to the end of the final. So the Nautilus champion seems to be just S-tier support at this Age. And it seems like he's the defining support at the moment. Leona kind of nearby that as well. We've been seeing Leona, Lulu cropping up every once in a while, but with already the supports locked in, a pretty aggressive style coming in from each of them. Leona, you can almost argue, functions very similarly to how Nautilus does. This is why you're seeing in the next part of the bands, they're trying to take away things that are going to be really strong into Rumble. That Diana has been banned away, something that normally can just jump on top of Rumble before he's able to actually get a lot of his damage over time off. The Diana, we saw one game of it, didn't work out too well, but... We know what she can do Again? with the Nautilus as well. Kind of the same idea and just eliminating somebody really quickly. And the pairing for Golden Guardians, they'll probably take a blind top laner here. I think you just keep going with Nar. He's just so right. safe. That's why I see an Aurelia ban too. And I'm almost thinking that that's the reason why uh, Aurelia is banned there. It's like what we saw last time, but this time we're not seeing the Jace ban. Instead, it's the Gangplank ban taken away from Niles. To almost force him onto that, but they grab Jace themselves, not wanting that Nar. Okay, yeah. I mean, they say we don't want you to have the Jace into the Nar. The Jace with the Nautilus is a pretty good combination, anyhow. So they're just gonna go with the long range, the old school, very old combination from Rumble and Jace. You shock blast somebody, and then you put the equalizer on top of them, and suddenly they are dead. That can happen. But it has to be a squishy target, so it's not the easiest to execute. It requires them to get out of landing phase even. But what will Cloud9 answer with in the jungle now? Or is it going to be the flex? <gasps> oh! Fiddlesticks! Alrighty! Alrighty! I was going to say they need AP, maybe Morgana, maybe that's what we see. When we talked about fear, how that can be a very long CC, well... Who's better to fear than Fiddlesticks? And then the Engager, too. Just such a hard engage. One of the strongest team fighters in the game. It's really not close. When he gets a good ultimate off, the fight is over. You're really just not coming back from that one. So uh, Golden Gardens needs to be on point with their vision and respecting that the Fiddlesticks can come out of nowhere as well. It's an interesting response there with the Twisted Fate, though. Because at least you'll be able to see Fiddlesticks from afar, stop him out of his own channel, but also synergizes really well with Jace in the top lane. This is a kind of an LPL special, as you might be familiar with, where the TF gets paired with the Jace, constantly high burst in the top lane. We saw that a lot over in the LPL during spring. Always trying to rotate around, play around where you're going to have that high burst of damage. The Everfrost build out of Twisted Fate where he shows up somewhere, immediately is able to get the gold card right into the Everfrost route. Shock blast damage just in case they weren't dead already. And rinse and repeat over and over again until the end of time. And you get so much priority. You have enough priority to repeat until the end of time for the most part because Jace is lane prio is very high especially into the nar nar will just try to team fight can have kill pressure with the fiddle sticks of course but he can always just turn it on with a single shock blast and then jumping into the wave bam it's cleared you can start to rotate over so i think golden guardians have given some given themselves some good tools to win this game but cloud nine just continue to surprise because these are just some really powerful picks on the composition that makes sense at every level yeah, and oh God, I, I just love seeing Fiddlesticks. I am so happy to be able to have a Fiddlesticks. It's been so long since we've seen one of them in competitive. We were seeing it as a support for a long time, but now in the jungle with Predator as well. Shurnfire is going to be constantly looking for those ganks come level 6. 
Oh, he looks like a predator with how scary the new fiddlesticks is anyway. So I'm glad that this is the rune that it's taken. It actually makes this early game much more dangerous. And those ultimate ganks, really nasty. The extra movement speed can be just so tough to deal with. Because the second he gets in range of you, you get feared. And then he can catch up to you, even if you can displace him. Or you just don't have enough time to get out of it. So I want to see what Shurnfire has up his sleeve for this because this is going to be a very relevant pick for the rest of the season his wave clear is high he has magic damage which synergizes with all the physical damage solo laners that are heavily prioritized right now hasn't been nerfed and has a really fast clear exactly it's uh one of those clears that's always fun to watch too if he starts on uh some of the other camps that like blue buff and gromp you can do at the same time and we've seen that from other ones but another fun one is red buff and raptors at the exact same time where he's able to clear them all out and stay relatively healthy he's not actually too threatened by either of them it's not easy it requires practice but these are professionals we expect it them to have that practice down to be able to play these champions to the optimal level and clear speeds as there's every so often just a new video on a fight in the bot lane never mind just, it was a video, yeah, video just, on clearing yeah just a little bit of a pull just like oh I, I landed the dredge line and then like uh you know actually we don't really want to fight this right now tristana doesn't have the most range level one realizing how that could be pretty bad but i like that that little ward placed down by yunb be able to spot out Churnfire doing exactly as I was saying, the red buff at the same time as the Raptors. They know where this Fiddlesticks is, keeping tabs on where he's located to hopefully be able to make a play early out of Rose Thorn. He's got it down. He really does. So the easy way you can do this at home, look at the little tree he's on, right? you got to stand next to that tree, that pine tree right there. That's where you look for to be able to juggle both of those camps. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty easy right now. You see how he's able to do it and full health that's the crazy thing always with the new well new fiddle six how long has this free work been out now over a year now right it's been a while it's been a, a hot minute really on this fiddle six i mean maybe since we've been in a time chamber these past year and a half it's hard to know but i feel like it's been quite some time yeah it, it, i love it personally i think that they did a fantastic job with changing how his thematic uh, look his and making him a lot more spooky and terrifying even the voice how it's more of the crackly inhaling voice that just sounds so creepy and ominous he was scary in that he was goofy before yeah <laughs> nah. <laughs> not really sc actually scary more just like a ha ha kind of scary now he's scary scary but bot lane speaking of scary prismal taking a lot of damage there from both Sven and Isles, where he is forced back under the turret once more. And it's a change of pace for the bot laners this time around. Not going to be ganked this early on, especially after seeing the junglers cross paths in the mid lane. Just stops everyone from respecting where the junglers are at and just go as aggressive as possible. They know they have a few seconds before anybody could potentially route back up to their lane. So. It's always exciting to see who takes advantage of where the junglers are at and then immediately just turns rabbit in their lane and almost all ends every time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for now it's a little bit passive out of the two teams. Even if we're seeing, seeing some trade of blows, nothing too uh, permanent really sticking at the moment. They're just kind of seeing what they can do. They're testing the waters, testing the limits to see if they can get anything. Because for Cloud9, they're waiting for that crow storm. They're waiting to be able to get sure and fire, to be able to utilize that predator with the crow storm, to be able to chase everyone down. Because if he is left unseen, that is a now five man fear he's able to get with how they changed his Q and fear to work. That's the real danger and why you really need to have vision on the fiddlesticks. Five man fear completely turns the tide of a fight. I mean, that's just a bonker as a way to engage. It's a incredibly powerful way to start the fight and so that deep vision that prevents him from having the entire map as his just resting place for ultimates is really important that's why i think the the twisted fate pick can be really useful because it'll mm -hmm. keep tabs on fiddlesticks a little bit more than if he was just a regular control mage so that should help out in theory if it gets ever in a tricky situation where you're not sure where the fiddlesticks is at just pop the tf ultimate and back off from where you see him 
Exactly. That's I I like seeing that twisted fate as well for that reason. To be able to keep tabs on Sure and Fire, where this fiddlestick is at, because if you ever let him have that alone time, it's going to be scary. But now, Isles was able to get a bit of trade. I was wondering where Rose Thorn was if he was going to try to look for a bit more, since soon it soon is going to be going to be on level six. And once he has that, we need to see that Destiny Gate used all all over the place to try to make these plays happen. Because until then. Gonna be risky, especially with Shurnfire getting caught out pretty far. They've got a lot of damage on Rosethorn with explosive charge to get first blood barely, but it's two kills. Pick up by Yunbi, trying to see if Copy could join in with his Sonic Wave. Jumped over the board, gets the flash. At least it's a flash for now, but it's two kills picked up by that mid laner on Golden Guardians. They didn't want to take that fight because Copy is level six. Yeah, it's a 2v3, but this Lee Sin can be deadly at this stage in the game. Darshan jumps okay. Niles. Getting a lot of damage, too, on this Jace. But Jace, we all know, can do around the same amount of damage. But you got to be careful, especially once Darshan goes mini. You saw that hyper damage and being able to get the third auto attack. What it can do if you're not too careful. Yeah, the Nara is pretty deadly, especially in combination with the Fiddlesticks. You're going to get hundreds of zeroed if you get ever crashed into your turret. So Niles has to respect that if there is a wave building, you need to know where Shurnfire is at because he can easily hop over that wall and suddenly you're dead. You're just spooked and they're going for the TF. Can he get the kick flash? Look at yes, the kick and look at the fair, baby. Nowhere to run. Shut down for Shurnfire. Oh, too easy. That's the power of the Lee Sin. Just the kick flash. Kind of messed the ward hop. Could have had an opportunity to do it without the flash, but then just plays it safe. Just says, I got it. We can do this again. You don't have flash. Fiddlesticks ulties, and they get a shutdown for it, too. That's a big deal, because suddenly the TF, who was struggling in lane, falling behind in CS, just got much more gold in the pockets of Copy. As right now, Niles. Sure. Oof. Taking a lot of damage there, again, from Darshan to try to be able to get away. You thought he had Rose Thorn in the wings to be able to help him out, but that's a risky play regardless. Even if you're going to have your Rumble show up soon, Darshan's not fully committing for that. He's just trying to see if he can force you out of lane. Yeah, he, he just wants to make sure that Niles doesn't get the advantage he wants in the laning phase. That is what Jace is for against the Nar. Just... Being able to build up a lead in lane and then transfer that lead into item advantage that just pokes away at the team fights and you just keep him down, never give him the opportunity to go Mega Nar in these fights without already being chunked. So as long as Darshan just focuses on keeping Niles down in the lane, having him base, he'll keep his CS down and be hurting the reason why Niles picked Jace in the first place. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, Golden Guardians, even though they have been you know, relatively even getting the two kills for Gunby in the mid lane. They haven't been able to use that Destiny Gate like we wanted to. We ha we're still waiting on that timer where he's going to be able to make this play. Finally, oh. we see it pop to the bot lane, but it's going to be the rocket jump right into the waiting arms with a nice follow up coming in from Prismal. But still, Sven is alive. Four members are committed to the spot lane from Golden Guardians looking for the equalizer, but they can't because they saw Shurn fire. Ooh, barely dodges out, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna die. Okay, let's see. Equalizer put down, and oh, poor Rose Thorn. It's a little bit unfortunate there. He was a little too overextended, and with that, it's an easy pickup. I mean, you remember when we watched TL and how clean they were at making these plays with the stuns around the cleanses of Yeon? Well, Sven had no cleanse available. Yet Yunbi locked in a red card. So I understand the red card if you think he's got cleansed, but he was clearly away from it. So a missed timing on the summoner spell out of Golden Guardians results in no gold card loaded. And so since Ven got away, then the red card goes onto Isles, and then he's now able to escape. So a bit of a missed time ends up backfiring hugely for Golden Guardians. And it feels reminiscent of last game, doesn't it, Crumbs? Where we see these plays attempted by Golden Guardians. They're trying to see if they can get these aggressive early momentum plays working out for them. But it just they're too aggressive. They're going too far, and it ends up biting them in the butt, and Cloud9 are punishing them. Right here, it's going to be the cross arm over the wall, but Copy, he got himself caught out. Or oh. did he? Turns it around to pick up the kill. Just waiting for the angle to kick the team into the fiddlesticks. Niles had flash, but what could he do? There's no escaping that one. Copy was going to be able to find the angle. And that is them 
it's taking a little bit too long in the river, bathing, cleaning themselves up from what happened last time around, and they paid dearly for it. They can start the Rift Herald now, but this Rift Herald is not going to be fought for. It seems like the team is more than happy to just take the plates in the bot lane. You've got a Tristana anyways, right. the demolition expert down there. And if that wasn't enough, you're actually zoning away Prismal. So normally she'd be getting some farm. Um, Copy is safe. Yeah, I was gonna say, Copy's relatively safe. Even if Prismal's nearby, maybe they thought that Yunbi was gonna be able to join up, but then they realized that the Destiny Gate's still on cooldown, still got some time. Not really wanting to commit just yet instead. Maybe even wanting to just pop. Yeah, there it is. Immediate pop top lane to be able to get Nile some desperately needed gold. They might be able to get that first turret, but Tristana's still gotten a lot down here. It's going to be the dragon as well. Look at that. She's got so many plates. Really not that big a deal for Cloud9 that they've lost the Rift Herald here. Yep, probably will lose that first turret. But for the amount of value they've been getting thus far in this game, I think they're more than happy with that one. Yeah, if he, probably, he just presses a charge here, this is his turret, just taking his time with it. Not sure why he doesn't want to take it, actually. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. There it goes. Okay, putting the charge up there. Going to be able to take that. Maybe was trying to deny some CS from whoever is going to show up into the bot lane. But it, it is going to delay the recall for some time. Looking at the map, I guess there's not really much that you have to worry about. There's nothing you're trying to fight over. What a scuttle crab. There's no dragon. There's no rift herald. Might as well just wait it out and deny a little bit of extra gold. You could freeze the lanes here. I do like that strategy in keeping the turrets, just killing away minions, making sure that you're slowly whittling down those advantages. Because oftentimes you think, oh, well, what does it matter? It's 18 CS, 30 CS, 50 CS, what's the big deal? But when it comes to finding a reset that might be relevant for it, wait a minute. Oh. Try to get the kick on a newbie, but now it's the flash away that Copy's forced to use just to be able to survive. A bit of an overcommit coming in from Cloud9, a bit uncharacteristic from them. You got the flash out of Lee though, so that's pretty good though. He's going to be a slippery fella and won't be able to make that combo play. So it's uh, it's some value there. I, I think I'll trade Leona's flash for right. Fiddle. Oh, but that crow store, my god, sure and fire. It was huge being able to get the kill onto Prismal. Looking to see if they can follow up. But with that kill, they've got control of the mid lane, even if Golden Guardians are trying to see if they can stay their ground. It is a big loss that they just committed to. They had no idea where Shurnfire was at. They solely suspected that he was in the area, but not knowing exactly his location, the second you ask it, it's already too late. He can jump you, and when he gets that fear off from the rest of the team is ready to follow up, it's already way too late. And now you have a Fiddlesticks who's 2-1-3. and three. Already got the, He's got the Predator boots a long time ago, and he is looking scary on this champion where... We were saying, like, we liked this Twisted Fate. We liked how it was going to be able to stop him, but you got to use the Destiny Gate to be able to spot him first. They walked way too close there, and it's because they had no good vision. They didn't see either side of the lane, so they couldn't hug anywhere. They had to just stay right in the middle, and that just put them as sitting ducks for Cloud9. He's gone with the Hextech Rocket Belt now, <laughs> so he's going to be even faster in the jungle and in those engages. He's going to be sticking to you like glue. He's not going to look to see if he can ever be spread away from the carries on the side of Golden Guardian. It's going to be difficult to stop him, but right now, Destiny Gate, attempt to pick on the Isles. He goes Golden. Five members are here from Golden Guardian, but they still didn't get the kill, and that kick is huge on a Rose Thorn Equalizer. Whoa. Might be able to split up the team. They're going to be able to get the kill on the copy since he didn't have the flash, but the Buster Shot will be able to trade one for one, and Cloud9 keep their ground and push back Golden Guardian's mid. And Fiddlesticks is still around, so they could even go to the tower for a dive if anyone stays. Darshan has his ultimate, so Golden Guardians might end up losing the tier one in the mid lane just for that play, despite it looking like it went decently. They will respect, though, that they have been spotted. The control ward does see the fiddlesticks, and Nar goes back to the top side, so they're okay with just keeping their ultimates available for the next fight. And right now, Golden Guardians, there's so much control of vision that they have to use because Jurnfire is just going to keep doing this. He's going to look for these plays with the depth charge. They have the fear as well. The damage on to Niles. Poor Yunbi. He shows up too late to be able to help the top laner. And now look at the heals coming in oh, no. from Jurnfire. He's still alive. He's going to be able to get a little bit of damage with the silence and the fear 
on to Yunbi. Rose Thorn wants to be able to chase this, but does not have the equalizer. And look who's showing up. Copy scares away Golden Guardians. Really close. They might have been able to get some more, but they still get the tier one in the top lane. They are hard winning across the map, just constantly routing around the Golden Guardians. The Fiddlesticks getting another kill down there and drawing so much attention now results in an entirely lost wave in the top lane. Niles has to go answer that one. His TP will be back up, so it's okay that he's in the top lane. But with Golden Guardians being spread across the map, that lets Cloud9 take control over the river and position themselves for this next dragon fight better than Golden Guardians. Right now, I'm just wondering where Golden Guardians can maybe fight back against Cloud9. It feels like they still have a strong composition. That Twisted Fate Jace combination, we haven't really been able to see them work together just yet. It's been more of these plays on the bottom half of the map from Golden Guardians. I want to see them incorporate Niles a bit more into that synergized comp that you were talking about during draft. There's just no team fighting for them. That's the problem. When you've got the Jace and the Twisted Fate combination and not a very good setup for the Rumble, you're going up against Fiddle's Nautilus. That is a wild combination. Look at so much as he's dead. Rosethorn? Um, um, mm, uh, mm. You know what that was? You know oh, how no, Rumble Niles. is a, is a, okay, he's oh, dead too. Yeah. This is just unfortunate. It, Niles at least is able to get a good amount of damage back, but there's the depth charge, and there's Van giving more gold over this Tristana, waiting for it. There's the rock jump, Goomba stop, Rampage. Yeah, so you know how Rumble pilots a mech? Sometimes the mech has a user error, and it just acts on its own. It can just go haywire and look for some mission that hasn't been dictated by the little Yordle. So I think that's what happened. It's a renegade mech. <laughs> just unfortunate for the side of uh, Golden Gardens. You gotta, you gotta get your mechs under control. You know, you can't let them go renegade. You can't let them uh, be rogue on you. For, for the side of Golden Guardians, now after that play, I was wondering what they could do to maybe get back into this game, maybe utilize that Twisted Fate and Jace combination together. But now it's just feeling like it's grasping at straws. They gotta try to get these miracle picks to find. Maybe Sven, since he's 4-0, and zero, that's a lot of shutdown gold you can gain from that one. But I highly doubt Isles is really going to leave the side of Sven anytime soon. Yeah, and uh, even if he does, how do you catch him? You saw how hard on our first series catching the Tristana, who didn't even have Cleanse was. You now have a Trist with Cleanse, with Flash, and Buster Shot, and the only guaranteed stun you have is going to be flashing from TF or Newbie. So by the time that connects, he's always going to be able to dash out. We got a 1v1 here in the bot okay. lane. All right, that, that's how we'd expect it, right? The Jace, when uh, Darshan is in mini form, is going to be able to do a lot of damage back to him. But once he goes mega, then you you want to bail, run for the hills, wait it out again. It's just too late, though. It, you're getting these good trades from Niles, but what are you gaining from it? Maybe if they can get this kill onto Darshan, they've committed the equalizer, but they missed the shock blast. Yeah, you can just stride breaker flashed out out of respect there too. Four Golden Gardens may not have even been necessary, frankly, with the Stride Breaker, but there just was no reason to chance it. But we got another fight with TF catching. Oh, here we Sven. go. Sven. That's a big hit. Uh, Gonna be able to get the Jack, get Captain Jack cleanse out of Sven. And now Yunfi so low. Crow Storm Fear 2. They've got the Rampage out of Shurnfire. They've got the double kill for him as well. The Goomba stops inbound for Sven. The Flash is away. Chasing down newbie, nowhere to really go. You can see Niles on the other side wanted to be able to get the kill on the copy, but he couldn't. And that is now another ace clean uh, yet again out of Cloud9. I'm so glad we talked about how hard it would be to catch Sven because they threw a lot at him and it wasn't really close. He was able to cleanse out of the stun well and then flash out right on time, even using the ultimate to disengage. Prismal had no business. He didn't even consider thinking about ulting into that one because he is so far behind. That is a phantom dancer just entirely ahead on Prismal. So he was just so much stronger on that fight. Not enough damage and feels like Cloud9 is just picking up the the finishing touches on this game. Looking for mm -hmm. some cherries, looking for some whipped cream, maybe some candles, some decoration, just ready to send it home and send happy birthday to the first 2-0 of their split. 
Especially when they have the surprise party of Fiddlesticks on their team. It's only appropriate that they're able to have this kind of showing. And we got to take a look at this replay. And like I said, it's just the Captain Jack cleanse here from Sven to be able to get immediately away from that gold card. Right. Slowed down by the Leona ultimate, but then flashes away. And Frizzle does actually try to follow up. My bad, but it just was not close. He doesn't have nearly nope. enough damage at this stage in the game. No, then they're so far behind that at this point, there's no real way for them to get back into this game. They needed to make those earlier plays, getting this Twisted Fate with Niles, maybe even helping out Prism a bit. And they attempted that, but Cloud9 have been able to read them like a book. They only had one slight hiccup throughout this entire game. Otherwise, it has been very clean out of them and showing why they have been this dominant roster throughout Academy time and time again, even here, where you pop the Destiny Gate looking for Sven, but instead you have to use it on Isles because who else are you going to look for? Who else are you going to try to see if you can kill with the Depth Charge on it to Prismal? And look at Copy on the other side, scaring away Yunbi, looking for the kick into the team, and they've already got the kill, dominating Shurn Fire. Again, the resets come in from Sven, and look at this. It's Prismal and Newbie trying to be able to get away, but they cannot. Second time this game, it's a clean ace from Cloud9. This surely should be the game. Yeah, they're just gonna end it. They don't need Baron. I actually love this. We're gonna have a game ending without Baron having been taken. So all the stats around Baron for Cloud9 at the end of the split might be hampered by this one, but it was dominating from start to finish. 19 to three. It was not close. They are here to play and stay. Sven with two games of 700 gold bounties. Man, Sven. Get this guy to LCS, right? He is doing amazingly in this series, and really, it's a good showing out of him. Sometimes you see players that get pushed down into the academy, they get a little bit demoralized, and they're like, oh, I'm not going to do as well. Well, Sven is here to prove himself. It's here to show why he deserves a spot in the LCS. And honestly, I don't know if anyone's going to be able to touch him after what we've just seen witness today. No, already in his first series, he's breaking ankles, the escapes, the comebacks from being camped, the CS. I mean, yeah, we knew how well this guy was going to play. He was one of the best ADs at MSI, one of the best international events of all the year. So we're going to take a look at some replays first before we go into that one and start just praising the AD carry. Look at that picture perfect cleanse. It just turned out into a Sven montage and we didn't even ask for it. All right, we're going to see another one later on, too, because it was just great. And I do want to praise Shurnfire on this Fiddlesticks as well, since it is our first time we got to get to see Fiddlesticks this year. And how he was able to perform, well, definitely was able to show why we might be looking to expect him a bit more in the coming uh, weeks here in our summer split. The Fiddlesticks is just a, a nightmare, quite literally. He is so difficult to deal with. A lot of players just hate playing against him because his dynamic and approach to the game is entirely different. The way his warding works, the way his ultimate works is really not like any other champion in the game. It's kind of like a Zac, but much scarier. And this was right towards the very end. It's only five minutes before the game was actually over as they picked Niles. And you can see that Sven, even the team player, making sure that there is uh, an assist on the side of the Lee Sin before he takes the kill. And that, again, getting that huge uh, cleanse immediately when the gold card lands, the Captain Jack style, which allows Cloud9 to keep cleaning up Golden Guardians here in these fights. And this is their first of two clean aces that we see them replicate just a couple minutes later. Yes, and uh, we're going to get the last one too which is going to be pretty fun to see because this is where Golden Guardians is trying to go for a Hail Mary. They find Isle, but I mean, there's just nothing they can do about it. Prismo is getting 1v1 by Darsham. It seems like it, it's actually just multiple 1v1s across the map and all of them are going Cloud9's favor. So it's like when you and your friends take on another gang and then suddenly you realize all of you are outclassed individually and together and you're like, oh we shouldn't have done any of this yeah and that all goes back to like the early stages of that game doesn't it where there is these aggressive plays again by golden guardians academy where it's them trying to see if they can be proactive but then overextending it came a bit too late it came too late that's where we say that these picks like twisted fate 
put so much pressure on you because you have to be making plays off the first ultimate before the ultimate is available. You have to be so proactive. You can't do it to catch up into the game. You have to do it to wrestle for control and never let it go. So that's the approach that Golden Guardians needs to take if they want to continue with this kind of composition. Well, we'll have to see how they're going to do later on in the season. But for now, we actually have our Verizon post game interview, I believe. I didn't get to catch who it was with, but I'm excited to be able to have, let's see, we got Shurnfire. Hey, Shurnfire, I'm glad we got you. Congratulations on the 2-0 victory. First, we got to just ask, how does it feel? Uh, it feels great to be back for a summer split, you know. We changed a few things up. Uh, we have a new AD carry, and yeah, everything's uh, a bit different, but um, yeah, good start. How did you take the the loss in Proving Grounds? I know some teams took it really hard. I thought you guys were going to come in as the favorites, but did you change anything from that? Was there areas in your gameplay that you felt like you needed to clean up after that kind of uh, loss at the finals? Yeah, so me personally, the loss in the finals, um, I guess I didn't take it as bad as other people because, um, you know, overall we came first in the regular season. Um, we definitely should have won that series, but obviously we didn't. Um, and I think personally for me, it's, it's more about like how I can be more flexible. Like I always want to be really efficient as a jungler. I'm sure you do too, Crumbs, but, um, sometimes, <laughs> um, you need to, uh, play, uh, for team play. And I think I've been, um, figuring that out. And also obviously there's a new meta now. It's a lot of like fighting. So. Um, there's just times where you, you gotta like not farm camps, you know, so yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. But I will say, you know, you definitely embodied the whole fighting mentality by picking fiddlesticks for us in game two. And yeah, you know, I know there's a lot of strategies behind the scenes that you don't want to leak too much, but I just, I want to know the reasoning, at least a little bit of why fiddlesticks here. Well, uh, first of all, it's fun. And after, <laughs> yeah, after, after, after that, it's like, I am, it's sort of like, uh, it's the start of the split, you know, there's a lot of things that people will just tend to follow trends and, uh, that people will tend to follow. And I think that, uh, one, one of my strengths, I guess, or our team strengths is we don't necessarily follow what's good. We always figure out why things are good and just question the standard and i think um yeah Fiddle sixes was just a good pick that game and uh, i'm glad i'll i'm one of the first because i i do think you'll probably come up more but i'm glad i'm one of the first to pick it yeah we think it'll be good too and i gotta ask you though first time playing with sven is there anything you've learned that he's just brought to the team that suddenly he's like oh I never thought of that before that clicks that makes us better <laughs> yeah i mean it doesn't matter if he was like a shit player because uh, he's just gonna raise the standard regardless. He's won, what, like, two splits in a row at LCS. He's, you know, he's accomplished a lot in EU as well. Um, so I think him coming here is just the standard's already grown. Uh, just naturally everyone wants to play better and be better because we're playing with, uh, a really good AD carry and accomplished AD carry. So I think he's just raised the standards. Um, People are sticking around off the screens, play solo queue, stuff like that. It's just small things oh. that uh, keep people focused. And yeah, he's a he's a hard worker as well. So I'm really glad that um, I'm able to play with him. Nice, you know, trying to impress I, I, I like that. I like that too. It's like you guys are all working together still. It's like trying to make sure you're all going to be able to grow and strive and get back into the LCS and really be able to smack people around then. But I kind of want to look at Academy and how you guys are going to feel going forward. Do you feel like you're going to be able to replicate a lot of your successes that you saw in spring here in summer? Um, I definitely think that we got away with, I mean, we won a lot last, uh, last split, but I think, uh, the loss in Premier Guns showed that, uh, we got a got away with a lot of things like. Seraphine, we got that like so many times for no reason, and then we won a lot easily. Um, but nowadays, I think teams are getting better in the summer split, to be honest. Um, especially with COVID being out, I guess, uh, and vaccines and stuff, we're like, we're more free. And it's, it's basically what I'm trying to say is I think everyone's getting better and, you know, 
Um, I think we need to get better as well. That's just it. I think the level of play is rising, at least in Academy, how I see it. Well, yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's that's fair. It's a, a good thing to hear. And it was great having you in, Sharon Fire, for this Verizon post-game interview. And we're looking forward to see how you're going to do throughout the rest of the split. But <laughs> for that, that's going to be our second best of two already done here, Crumbs. I believe on the other stream that they're already done. We got one more for us. We have one more remaining for this first day of the summer split. And I'm excited. I'm giving another little teaser before we toss that break. It's going to be Flying Quest Academy and Counter Logic Gaming Academy. So looking at this one, well, last one we had, you know, first place team and a team that's been well practiced within the amateur scene. Now we got teams that have been, we saw Flying Quest, they did really well in both Academy and then also the Proving Grounds, well, more like in the middle. Well, Counter Logic struggled in the spring split and then were able to do a lot better when it came to those secondary tournaments. Might we see something similar going into this map? Mm, yeah, I think we will, because some of the players here really needed the extra time. There's a lot of new players, a lot of new faces even to getting used to their roles. Someone like RJS, yeah, he played mid before, but switching over to the role once again, I think he could use some more, more practice with it, especially because it just changed again. So I really want to see what he's got in store, because the role right now is so much about flexibility flexing with your other lanes as champion pool so i think that this team could improve a lot with the extra time allotted to them in this off season and then when well, you've got FlyQuest who has some new players to the scene i think someone like nxi could also get a lot of value from just practicing a little bit more and getting used to the new season and more importantly the competitive environment yeah we'll have to see how for now, we're going to toss to a break so that way we can get ready for our final best of two of the day. Stick around. We'll be right back. 